All right, good morning, everybody. We took a swing at it a few days ago, but let's break it down just about lesson seven. Today, we're going to talk about writing and comparing numbers through hundred thousands, and we're going to go over the ordinal numbers. So let's take a look and see what we got coming up. So a little bit of review here. When we name money, we're going to look at either side of the decimal point. The decimal point is right here. First, we're going to look at the dollar side, right? We name the number, then we say what it is. In this case, $478. Pronounce your decimal point as and, and then say the other side, 13 cents. So I went over this because we also need to break it down when we're naming larger numbers. Because sometimes the numbers are larger than three digits. We need to understand the place value system in order to name those numbers. Each group always uses three digits. Even if there's no value there, you put in a zero and we'll talk more about that. The first three I call the no-name group. That's what we saw in the $478, right? The ones, the tens, the hundreds. But if you have a bigger number than three digits, you're going to need the thousand group. It goes 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. You want to look at each group at a time, just like when we're naming money. This time, though, instead of breaking it down at the decimal point, we're going to break it down at the comma. First, you say the name of the number, then the name of the group. So, what's the name of this number? I have a 4 and a 2. 42,000. Then go on and look at the other side. 19, and I have 19 in the no-name group, right? We don't see a group name after that. 42,019. If there's a comma after the word, put in a comma after the number, and vice versa, meaning if there's a comma after the number, you put in a comma after the word. We'll talk more about that when we see how it applies. Let's try a few out. Here it's going to say, use words to name. And they give us a string of numbers here. 5, 2, 3, 7, 0. The most important thing is, don't forget to write in your comma. You're going to put your comma in after every three digits starting on the right. 1, 2, 3 comma. We have three digits in the no-name group, two digits in your thousand group. Name the number, then name your group. On the left side of the comma, I have a five and a two. What's the name of that number? Hopefully you know that would be 52, right? Don't forget your hyphen. A five and a two is 52. 5 and 2, it's in the thousand group. So it's 52,000. I have a comma after the number, so I need a comma after the word. 52 is the name of the number. Thousand is the name of the group. Let's get ready to do the second half. Now I have 370 in the no name group. Well, what's the name of 370? How would you say it? 370. So let's get ready to type that in. 370. Do I have to say a group name after 370? No, because it's in the no name group. You just say the name of the number. You don't have to say a group name. 52,370. Let's try it again. Here they want us to use words to name, and the string of numbers they're giving us is 12002. 
Don't forget to write in your comment. Makes your job a whole lot easier. We're going to start at the end of the number. One, two, three digits. So my comma's going right here. I have one, two, zero, zero, two, right? So let's break it down and really start to think. Take a look at the first side of the number. How are we going to say one, two? What's the name of that number? I'm hoping everybody knows the name of that number would just be 12. But what group is it in? It's 12,000. Name the number, then name the group. If there's a comma after the number, you got to put a comma after the word. 12,000. Let's go and break it down on the right-hand side now. What do I have here? 002. What's the name of that? You're not going to say 002. You would just say 2. So just type it in. 2. 12,002. You don't have to say a group name after the 2 because he's in the no-name group. Just name the number. Don't have to name the group when it's in the no names. Okay, let's try another one like this. Here they're asking us to use words to name, and the digits they're giving us is four, five, six, nine. Remember to put in your comma first. So, also, if you're struggling, feel free to draw yourself these six little lines and write out the numbers. We have a four in the thousands group, and then a 5, a 6, and a 9 in your no-name group. Let's break it down. I have 4 in the 1,000 group. Name the number, then go ahead and name the group. So the name of the number again is 4. What group is it in? It is in the 1,000 group. If there's a comma after the number, you need a comma after the word. So 4,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. Here I have a 5, a 6, and a 9. Name the number, then go ahead and name the group. What's the name of the number? 569. 569 would be the name of the number. Do I have to say a group name here? No, I don't. He's in the no-name group. So the name of the number is 4,569. Here they're going to reverse it. Use digits to name. 150,035. So let's take a look. This word thousand here, that's your group name, right? We're still going to look on both sides of the comma. Start off 150. I got to write 150 in the thousand group. So 150 in the thousand group. Everybody in this room knows how to write 150, right? If there's a comma after the word, you need a comma after the number. So 150 in the thousand group, comma after the word, you're going to put a comma after the number. Then let's take a look at what's going on the right side. I just have 35, but I'm not going to go and write in just 35 because I have to use three digits. So that's not going to work for us. Where am I going to put 35? 35 is three $10 bills and five $1 bills, right? Go and fill in any empty spots with zeros. Do you have any hundreds in 35? 
No, you don't. So you would have a zero right here. 150,000, comma after the word, comma after the number, then 35. You got to use three digits. So it's zero, three, five, 150,000, 35. Take a look here. Use digits to name 16,130. So 16 in the thousand group. That would be a one and a six before your comma, right? Thousand is your group name. Sixteen in the thousand group. Now let's go and take a look at the right side. One hundred thirty. I go one hundred dollar bill, three ten dollar bills, and zero one dollar bills. There is one hundred thirty. You have to use all three digits. So to write the number. 16 in the thousand group, comma after the word, you need a comma after the number, 130, just like that. Again, if you're confused, you got a place value chart in your book, and feel free to write yourself out those six little lines when you're doing your Socrative quiz today. Let's try it one more time. Use digits to name 9,000. 12. Look on either side of your comma. Thousand is your group name. So I just got to deal with the number nine. I need to write a nine in my thousand group. Nine is going to go right here, right? Nine thousand. Now let's take a look at the right side. I have 12. But I gotta write it using three digits. So, do I want anything here in my hundreds? No, I don't. 12 is one $10 bill and two $1 bills, right? Do I have any hundreds when I talk about 12? No, I don't. So, we're gonna write in a zero. How do we write the number? 9,000, comma after the word, there's a comma after the number, then 0, 12, 9,012. Here we got to go and compare. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. Remember when we compare, we're using greater than, less than, or equal to we still want to look at both sides starting in the thousands place. Here we have 23,000. Here we have 23,000. It's a tie. Here we have 465, 23,465 versus 23,654. What is greater, 465 or 600? 54 looks like 23,654 is larger, and the Pac Man or the crocodile's mouth always opens up to the bigger number, right? Something a little bit different right now. Remember that numbers that are used to name position or order are called ordinal numbers. Like 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, etc. You have a chart on page 42. But ordinal numbers will sometimes trip up kids when we have questions like this. Tom was the fourth person in a line of 10 people. How many people were in front of Tom? And a lot of times kids will hear, oh, he's four, so there's four people in front. Well, if your line's in front here, this guy is first, second, third, fourth. Here is Tom, fourth in line, right? How many people were behind Tom? Sometimes drawing out a picture will help you. If he's fourth 
in the line. Let's figure out how many people are behind him. One, two, three, four, five, six people were behind him. How many people were in front of him? Three people were in front. Sometimes drawing out a picture will help you out. Here it's asking us, Bill was ninth person in line. How many people were in front of Bill? Well, if Bill was ninth in line, Bill would be right there, right? How many people are in front of him? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people are in front of him if he's ninth in line. So that, my friends, is the end. You definitely want to use a scratch piece of paper. Maybe take a look at that place value chart in your book on Lesson 7. Go slow, go careful, and good luck.